today uh, i will cover your heat your expansion under heat so under heat will cover two modules the first one will be expansion and then the second one will be gas loads so i'll try to cover those uh, sections today and then i will upload your videos and then this is the last section and the last question on your engineering science and four now uh, Consider that as your material with the original length, uh, certain length NO. So this is the original length. Now, if you increase a temperature on this uh, material, it will expand. So the change in temperature affect the property of a material. Uh, and then if you add your heat, your material will expand. And then if you remove your heat, it will contract. So it decreases with a, with a decrease in temperature, then increase with a, an increase in temperature. So our calculation will be based on a material behavior due to a change in the heat. Now, you have this. This was the original length, and then uh, due to a change in heat, this was an expansion. So my material expanded with this uh, amount. There are three important coefficients that we consider when you study your material. You start the one side where you look at uh, your linear expansion and then you, you start the two dimension where you look at your error expansion or superficial uh, uh, expansion. And then the last one would be your volumetric expansion where you consider uh, your volume. Now, each and every material will expand differently. It will depend on what type of material is it. For an example, your bronze, if they are in parallel with the steel. Your bronze will expand faster than the steel. What determine uh, the size of your expansion is your coefficient of expansion. This is why it's very important. Each and every material will have its own will have its own coefficient. One with a big coefficient will expand uh, larger than the other. So a steel and a copper. Your copper will expand larger than the steel because the coefficient of the inner expansion of a copper is larger than the one uh, of a steel. So we're going to discuss that uh, right now. Now, this three coefficient is the first thing that you need to understand. Your first coefficient is your coefficient of linear expansion. So it's coefficient of linear expansion. This is a symbol for my coefficient of linear expansion, alpha. So you need to be able to define a coefficient of a linear expansion, which is a change in length per unit length per change in temperature. So it's a ratio of a change in length per unit length per change in temperature in per degrees such as a millimeter and thousand millimeters for the change in length of our original length. Uh, so you need to be able to define a coefficient of linear expansion. It is defined as a coefficient a, a ratio of a change in length per original length per change in temperature. Now each and every material will have its own coefficient of linear expansion and it determine this the expansion that your material will be subjected to due to a change in temperature. Therefore uh, your change in length, if you want to make a change in length, you have the formula will be your original length coefficient change in t. This is for a change in length, this is your original length, this is a coefficient of linear expansion, this is your change in temperature, where change in temperature will be uh, the final temperature minus. The original temperature if it increases if it decreases it will be original minus final but it is different between your initial temperature and your final uh, temperature this is the first coefficient very important be able to define it and then derive this this is the equation that we find on the formula sheet then this is how it was derived secondly this material if you're looking at your two dimension you see what is called coefficient of Era expansion. P 
Eta is a symbol for coefficient of an era expansion. Uh, some of the book will call it a superficial expansion. The still a coefficient of an era expansion. Now, it's a change in area per original area per change in T. This is a coefficient of an area expansion. Remember, you change in area to original area minus the final area. You change in length to original length minus the final length. So, it's still, so it defines the ratio of your change in area per original area per your change in T. So, making your change in area subject of the formula will be uh, error original beta change in T. Your change in temperature is still the same. The last area coefficient. of volume expansion the symbol for volume expansion now for this material you're looking at a volume your three dimension your all your three side for your volume expansion it change in volume per original volume per change in t so you could see that uh, the so therefore make your change in volume a subject of the formula with the original volume coefficient change in t. So these are your three equations, three definitions. Uh, the basic one is a coefficient of linear expansion. You just replace your, your length with an area if you deal with your area. You replace your length with a volume if you deal with a volume. But this is the main and all your coefficient is uh, are derived from the from your original. So most of the times they will give you the coefficient of a linear expansion and then you will easily get the other coefficient. How? Let me write for you the relationships. The relationship between your three coefficients. So you have your linear, you have your area, you have your volume equal to one, two, three. This is one of the easiest uh, summary that you must remember. They will ask you the relationship between your coefficient, your three coefficients. Now, this. Uh, ratios. This is the ratios. So this ratio tells you the difference between uh, the the area between the area, the volume, as well as the uh, the linear. What is the difference in size? That means for your area expansion, it will be two times bigger than your linear expansion. For your volume, it will be three times bigger than your linear expansion. What you need to do? Uh, your linear expansion correlates with one, so linear is equal to one, uh, area is equal to two, volume is equal to three. So it means uh, you have one, area is two, volume is three. If you want to know uh, the relationship between the two, that means if you want to know uh, how big is or uh, your area expansion compared, you just take your number. So you will write uh, B over coefficient of area divided by coefficient of uh, divided by coefficient of linear expansion is equal to 2 over 1. So you just write it as a, a one with the numerator and another with the denominator. You can see that my area expansion is a numerator, so it's correlated with 2. 
on the other side, uh, my uh, the, your two will also be numerator, and then your linear expansion is the denominator. It correlates you to one. On the other, uh, after the equal sign, it also equal to one. What does it tells you? Make one a subject of the formula. N of one. If they gave you the the, the coefficient of linear expansion, that means. Uh, Beta is equal to two times alpha. So if they give, if they gave you the coefficient of a linear expansion, that means you also have the coefficient of a, your area expansion. You just have to use this knowledge. One, two, three. A linear area volume. Volume corresponds with three. Area corresponds with two. A linear corresponds with one. If you are given your your area expansion, that means uh, the coefficient of linear expansion is half that of uh, your error expansion. Let's just look at now if you were to take volume expansion over linear expansion, your coefficient that means it will be 3 over 1. Therefore, your volume expansion is 3 times bigger than your linear expansion. That's what your ratio tells you. You can also take the relationship between a volume and area, which would be 3 over 2. Therefore, your, that means your Volume, uh, your volume, your coefficient of volume expansion is 1.5 times bigger than that of air expansion. That's what the reason is. So you just correspond, your ratio correspond with a correct number. This is what you must remember. Then you can manipulate from there. For whatever given, you know that this one correspond with what? And then you can uh, determine your, you, you can determine your, you can determine your, your other coefficient. So they only give you one coefficient, then you use this relationship to find the other. So this is a very small section. Uh, this is the sum out of it. Equations will be a coefficient of, let me just write, change in length, will be original length, coefficient change in t. Secondly, change in area, original area, coefficient change in T. Change in volume, original volume, coefficient change in T. A change in area, is your area final minus, I mean in temperature, minus the temperature, a original. And then ratios very important relationship. Then a uh, you this a uh, relationship you you can just easily uh, can just easily find one of the coefficient if you are given one that is how easy it is also remember uh, this is in per degrees uh, per degrees Celsius this is a unit for all your for all your coefficient. All your coefficients are in per degree Celsius. If your temperature was measured in Kelvin, it means it would be per Kelvin. That's how easy it is. This is how small is this section. What more important is to understand the theory. It will expand or it will contract. This is the basics of it. So each and every material, if you add heat, it will expand. If you, do, if you remove it, it will contract. So uh, the material expand according to its linear coefficient. So in your information sheet, you will be given Certain all your coefficient if it's not there on your data, but you should be giving your linear uh, 
the confusion of the inner expansion and then it will help you to solve the problem. This is just a small section. So from this, uh, from here now we can now do the examples. Uh, thank you so much.